Rachel Spiegel is a registered nurse. Squeeze Bubba Kush for a lot of digestive conditions. And the director of operations at a medical cannabis dispensary called the Verdes Foundation. Spiegel says they see about 350 patients a day, many who say they need more cannabis. They do not have access to the quality medicine that they need on a regular basis. Spiegel says that's because right now, New Mexico dispensaries are capped at 450 plants, and the Department of Health caps each patient to eight ounces every three months. Senator Cisco McSorley wants to increase those numbers significantly. They can't buy medicine because it's not available. He's proposing that New Mexico dispensaries get to grow a thousand plants. Other states are allowing three, four, five thousand and more plants. And that patients be allowed five ounces every month. Critics have said this increased supply could make its way into the wrong people's hands, but McSorley strongly disputes that and says his priority is providing for the patients. If they run out, what's the patient going to do? They have to go to the black market or something like that, which we don't want. Spiegel hopes other lawmakers feel the same. Safety is our number one concern, and that's why we're asking for more plants. And that's why we're asking for this bill to be approved. In Albuquerque, Megan Cruz, KOAT Action 7 News. The Albuquerque City Council revealed its wish list today for the legislative session. One of its biggest priorities deals with the officer shortage, and it's calling on lawmakers to amend the Public Employee Retirement Act to allow retired officers to return to work while still collecting their pension. They hope this will entice some of them to rejoin the department. The council also wants legislators to focus on letting cities enforce curfews to people under 18 years old. A similar bill failed during the last session. A temporary Old Navy store is open for the first time since an explosion ruined their merchandise. In November, police say a vandal broke into the location off San Mateo and set off a bomb damaging all their clothing. While the store makes repairs, they've opened a temporary version in the same pavilion shopping center. They plan on moving back to their original location in the spring. Tomorrow, a lost puppy found at a crime scene could have a new home. KOET got to play with Gilmore this afternoon for what could be his final day in the shelter. Earlier in the week, APD found the four-month-old pit bull after he jumped into the stolen car they were investigating. Well, today was the last day the owner could come forward, meaning a new family can pick him up tomorrow. And we're told a lot of people have voiced interest. They're called dreamers, but these young immigrants fear they're headed for a nightmare. No one feels really safe at the moment. How they're working with Mexican officials after possible threats of deportation. And if your heating bill is going up like mine, we have expert tips you can do for free to save some cash. And a winter storm making for increasingly dangerous driving conditions. Details on who's getting snow and ice next in my live Super Doppler 7 forecast. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News live at 10. When Donald Trump promised to ramp up deportations, undocumented immigrants at the University of New Mexico were listening, and now they're fearful about their future. Action 7 News reporter Sandra Amira spoke to a student who does not know how long she'll be allowed to stay when the new administration takes over in just two weeks. New Mexico is home for University of New Mexico student Cindy Nava, even if she wasn't born here. I came to the U.S. when I was seven from Chihuahua, Mexico with my parents and siblings. Nava is one of hundreds of thousands of undocumented immigrants in the United States known as DREAMers. The Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, was a policy passed in 2012 that allowed some people who came to the U.S. illegally as children to apply for a work permit. The problem is those permits have to be renewed. Right now, there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of insecurity because of the new presidency um, and because of the threats that have been put out there. So no one feels really safe at the moment. Nava is doing everything she can to help people who fear DACA will be removed. She recently attended a conference in Los Angeles hosted by the Mexican government. Nava and another UNM student will soon start working with the Mexican consulate here in Albuquerque to make sure that other dreamers have access to information and resources about how any DACA changes will impact them. Nava says this type of fear is nothing new. Our communities and our, our families really have never had that full sense of safety. She says she's not losing hope and she doesn't want other dreamers to either. In Albuquerque, Sandra Damides, KWT Action 7 News. For the second day in a row, police had to inspect a suspicious package that turned out to be nothing. Today, the bomb squad was called to Gold Avenue downtown and they brought along the robot. 
after inspecting the device, they detonated it and then figured out it was not dangerous. It was a similar situation yesterday at the Walmart on San Mateo and Cole. Police are not releasing any more details about either device. In a week, two former APD officers could learn if they are being retried in the James Boyd case. Dominic Perez and Keith Sandy are accused of shooting and killing Boyd in 2014 during a standoff. The jury failed to reach a verdict last year, so now it's up to the new DA on whether to pursue criminal charges or drop the case. Prosecutors and the office's attorneys are due in court next Thursday to talk to a judge. The radioactive waste facility near Carlsbad is finally back open after three years of repairs and inspections. WIP stores the materials that are left over from the production of nuclear weapons. A back-to-back -back leak and fire forced it to close in 2014. The Department of Energy gave the green light to reopen last month. And this week, crews disposed of two new pallets of waste. A ribbon-cutting event is scheduled for Monday. Have you noticed your electric bill soaring as the temperatures go down and many of you are cranking up your heater? Tonight, Action 70 Sport and Megan Cruz shows you how to try and keep warm without hurting your wallet. You know, Doug, PNM says a lot of the times it's just about weatherizing your home. So that means keeping the cold air out and the hot air in. So they suggest using products like this one. This is clear plastic that you could stretch across your windows to help insulate them. Or there's this product, which is a double draft seal, and you can use this to plug up any drafts in either your windows or doors. PNM also recommends keeping doors closed so you're only heating rooms you use. They also have a home energy checkup program. And that's when a PM technician actually comes to your place to see what's wasting electricity. Look at the lighting, look at the appliances to determine if they're Energy Star compliant, um, looking at the windows to see what kind of windows they have. Are they old or new? And PM says this service could cost you either 15 or 30 bucks, but it could really save you a lot more in the long run. If you have any information about this program, you can go to pnm.com slash checkup. Live in Albuquerque tonight, Megan Cruz, KOAT Action 7 News. Now, live Super Doppler 7 weather. And check out this video on how the storm was raging in the town of Chama today. Widespread areas of blowing snow with four inches on the ground when this was shot. However, the area will pick up 10 to 15 inches of snow overnight. All right, live Super Doppler 7. You see this rain and snow to the west. This will be working into the Albuquerque Santa Fe areas, especially during the overnight hours. It's cold enough for snow light right now, but it will be intensifying. And there's going to be some dicey travel from Raton down into Las Vegas on into the Glorieta area and from areas around Tijeras eastward throughout uh, Santa Rosa and Tugancary. I wouldn't even drive during this time because it's only going to get worse during the overnight hours. Already Eagle Nest picking up a foot of snow and eight inches over in Raton. So as we look at temperatures, now look at this, 46 degrees in Albuquerque and only four. That's not a wind chill, an actual temperature. Though This is that Arctic surge we were telling you about. And as that moisture, the heart of the storm system still to the west of us, rolls over this, it's only going to get worse. So folks, you really need to buckle down and be careful in the morning and get the latest road conditions, snow and poor visibility throughout northeastern parts of the state around I-25 and Interstate 40. Dangerous driving conditions already in play throughout many areas and possible road closures, even the interstates. Now, this area in the purple, slick travel areas of snow packed and icy roads, not widespread, but enough to interact with you around Farmington, Gallup, Grants, Roswell. And this also includes winter weather advisories throughout Santa Fe on into Albuquerque. Look at the big picture timing. This is 10 o'clock tonight. The snows in the areas that I mentioned from the four corners, northern mountains, northeast. Now, as we advance it overnight, this gets thrown over the cold air. Very dangerous travel along Interstate 40, still along the northern mountains, areas along I-25, and areas to the west of Albuquerque as well. Noon, it starts to clear away. Let's zoom in and show you Albuquerque and Santa Fe. 10 o'clock, we'll go ahead and stop at 1 o'clock in the morning. Snow, Los Alamos, on into Santa Fe. And then look at this, 2 o'clock in the morning, rain. 3 o'clock, changing into snow around Albuquerque. 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you see it started to pull on out, probably 2 to 4 inches in the Santa Fe area, a trace to 2 in the Albuquerque area, favoring the foothills, but uh, some areas only get up a trace and maybe an inch here and there, and then 8 o'clock to noon, it really starts to clear out. Now, here's a projection of how much snow will happen between now and noon, and don't really focus on the amount so much as the colorization. Realize that Chama has like 9 inches of snow on the ground. They could pick up 10 more inches. 
And yeah, very dangerous travel. The potential thereof, I-25, Interstate 40 between Gallup and Grants as well. Seven day forecast looks like this. Temperatures holding in the 30s. We talked about a trace to two inches of snow. There you see the snow in the morning and it does clear at a pretty fast clip and then teens and 20s throughout much of New Mexico, 20s and 30s central and western parts of the state. We get on into Saturday. Boy, some brisk wind chills as we start the day. A high of 42 degrees. Sunday, 50, and then mix of clouds and sunshine early next week. A couple of showers around and Look at that. Well above average as we get into next week. Uh, normal for this time of year, 46. But we'll be in the 30s tomorrow. But the best time for snow would be probably from 4 o'clock to around 7 o'clock cool. in the morning. Oh, yeah. We, we're Facebook live right now. Hi, yeah. everybody. He's live on, on TV live. And, and my Facebook live so people can see your weather. Everybody's talking about the snow. They're very excited. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's about the skiing. It's about the, you know, two-hour delay we're all hoping for. Shit. I don't know who we're Not we. in Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, to sleep That's a little Shelley's longer. Been talking about just <laughs> like, a couple, are you sure? No. More hours no. Of <laughs> East Mountains will be on a two-hour delay. Should we talk about the ski challenge? Yeah, you're going to be Since there. We're yeah. About the two-hour delay doesn't exist. Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the ski challenge, and that takes place this Saturday at Ski Santa Fe. Here's some. Whoa. Uh, I know yeah. that's Jacob. He, he we had the GoPro okay. camera going on. Mm -hmm. I'm that other fast person going down the hill. Uh, maybe not. Wow. Uh, no, that's not. I'm the one falling. <laughs> you wish. But what this is, this is called the Media Cup, so uh, uh, Channel 7 along with uh, 13 Aww. and 4, we all put out teams and uh, you know, you get points from me, runs you do, points for the obstacle Good course. Show. Yeah, there, there we are. go. Uh, so uh, we, we, we um, We've won the cup two or three times. Mm -hmm. I'm not really oh, for sure. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Last year, we did not go home with it. It was a close one, but uh, another station got it. But uh, we're hoping to bring it home this we time. We don't ski, but you're going to have to do more because some of our ringers in that video, Lord Train, she left us about yeah. a year ago. She's Kirsten good. Swanson, yeah. our ringer's not going to be there. We have other ringers. We have other ringers. But you're very good. You downplay it, but you you know, you're a triathlete. You do it all. <laughs> I do it all. You do it all. I do my six runs and go to the go to the cabin or whatever. In the commercial break, we'll see what the Facebook Live people say about your skiing. You're still oh, on. yeah, we'll be still on Facebook. We live. have like We're two more there, minutes and then we'll come this talk in just a second. Yeah, <laughs> it is great. But no, it's a way for everybody to see you, Joe. We have to know what's going on. Snow is coming, but no two hour delay for me. <laughs> KOAT's direct TV viewers are still unable to watch us on the satellite provider tonight. KOAT's parent company, Harris, continues to negotiate with direct TV for fair terms to allow them to retransmit KOAT to you. We have heard from many of you asking about getting a credit to your bill. That's up to DirecTV. It's not required to offer a credit. But we have heard from some of you who say they're being offered a credit or additional programming at no charge for a period of time. Hearst Television continues to negotiate in good faith and hopes to resolve this matter soon. Our programming is always free over the air with an antenna. You can also get KOAT through local cable and other satellite providers. And we stream our newscasts on KOAT.com and our KOAT app. Next, it's our ski and snowboard report. See which areas have the most snow. And later, an attack broadcast over Facebook Live, the latest on the suspects and the 18-year-old victim. Keeping up for a great weekend on the slopes in New Mexico. But before the storm moves in, Eric Green has your updated ski and snowboard report. The bases are building. Here's the latest numbers we have. In southern New Mexico, four of Ski Apache's 57 runs are open on 30 inches of snow. Up in northern New Mexico, Angel Fire has 50 of 80 runs open on a base just over two feet deep. At Red River, the base is just shy of three feet deep and 57 of 60 runs are open. Santa Fe also has a base near three feet deep and 74 of their 83 trails are up and running. At Sandia Peak, the base is checking in at about a foot and a half and all 39 runs are open. There's over two feet of snow on the mountain at Pajarito and 31 of their 45 runs are open. Sipapu has over two feet of snow and 34 of 42 runs are open right now. Towski Valley gets to claim the most snow in the state with a base over five feet deep, 95 of their 110 runs are open. Up in southern Colorado, a little fresh snow at Purgatory has the base over four feet deep now, 91 of 94 runs are open. At Wolf Creek, the base is seven and a half feet deep and all 77 runs are open. With your ski and snowboard report, I'm meteorologist Eric Rain, KOAT Action 7 News. If your kids have not been on the slopes before, now is their chance throughout January. Kids can learn to ski at a reduced cost as part of our 
Kids Learn to Ski program. Reservations are required, however, so call the area closest to you to schedule a lesson. It's for kids 6 to 12. For more information, go to KOAT.com or the KOAT app. A disturbing attack broadcast on Facebook. In the video, you can see a young man being held captive and tortured tonight. A look at the four people charged in that assault. And two women kicked off a flight just because they wanted to see their dying father, why the airline says they had to go. The report is brought to you by Bank of the West. For a personal approach to banking, go West. Bank of the West. You're watching KOAT Action 7 News Live at 10. It's a disturbing case in Chicago where a video streamed on Facebook Live shows a young man held captive and tortured. Police are now questioning four people. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports, but we do want to warn you, the video you're about to see is hard to watch. Felony charges against the four people accused in this vicious attack on an 18-year-old with mental health challenges in Chicago. <laughs> Investigators now calling it a hate crime, explaining the white victim was held captive for as long as two days, bound, beaten, cut with a knife, forced to drink toilet water, and verbally abused by his four black captors, including with racial slurs and even mentions of the president-elect. All while police say the suspects laughed and streamed the attack live on Facebook. Let me be very clear. The actions in that video are reprehensible. This police report shows the victim's parents reported him missing on Monday. While authorities searched, they claim the parents began getting text messages from people claiming to be his captors. Investigators then found this video and discovered the victim wandering on a street. He was very dis discombobulated. He was injured. He was confused. And at which time I called uh, an ambulance. He's doing uh, well. As, uh, as well as he could be at this time. The suspects, Tess Faye Cooper, Jordan Hill, along with Brittany and Tanisha Covington, face a list of charges, including hate crime and aggravated kidnapping. And they're expected in court on Friday. Meanwhile, a Facebook spokesperson tells ABC News they don't allow people to celebrate or glorify crimes on Facebook and say the original video has been taken down. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. Today, authorities in Arizona got into a police chase with a naked woman who stole a deputy's car. Troopers put out stop sticks at one point, but that didn't work. Then she crashed into a median where she was finally taken into custody. This started this morning when someone called the sheriff's office about a nude woman at a gas station. The concern grew just because of her, uh, because she was disrobed. He actually, uh, she reported that she was sexually assaulted. But before the deputy could ask her about that claim, she stole the vehicle. They plan to interview her after she gets out of the hospital. Two Florida sisters say they were humiliated after Allegiant Air kicked them off their flight to be with their dying father. The sisters say they were distraught about learning their dad was close to death. But the airline attendants claimed the women were a threat. Lauren Korn has more. The sisters got on that Allegiant airplane here at the Orlando Sanford Airport when they say they got kicked off that flight for no reason at all. He died peacefully, so all in all, that's the main thing. Unfortunately, Debbie Hartman and her sister, Trisha Baker, weren't there to say goodbye to their sick father, who was in hospice care. He didn't even know he was sick. On January 2nd, the two were on an Allegiant flight to Asheville, North Carolina. But while waiting to leave the tarmac, Hartman's sister got a text message. Their father only had hours to live. I didn't know if my sister was getting the same text. So I thought I need to go back there and consult her. Baker says once she got up to tell her sister, a flight attendant stepped in. She said, you need to sit down. And I said, well, I, can I just sit here? I just want to console my sister. We just got word that my dad's dying. Hartman says she started having a panic attack and the situation only escalated from there when her sister confronted the woman for not being compassionate. She said, you're being very rude. My father is dying and I'm comforting her. And they said she needed to keep her personal problems off the plane. Minutes later, the plane turned around and airport security escorted them off the flight. They told us you were a threat to the flight and um, I, I just couldn't believe it. Hartman wasn't the only one. This passenger took to YouTube to let people know about her frustration. The most inhumane 
deplorable thing I've ever seen any human being do. Hartman says their father died shortly after and now wants the airline to be held accountable. I don't think they should keep their jobs, to be honest with you. They don't have a heart. They didn't care that I wasn't going to see my dad. In Deland, Lauren Korn. The airline released the following statement saying in part, at Allegiant we rely on our crew members to provide and oversee a safe environment for every passenger. We take this customer feedback seriously and are in the process of conducting an investigation into what occurred. A man is safe tonight after a Los Angeles search and rescue team got him off the small island he was trapped on. Firefighters used a boat to get to the man. They say he did not appear to be injured, but paramedics were assessing him on the scene. No word yet on just how he got stranded, but the driver, the river bottom in that area is often occupied by homeless encampments and rescues are not uncommon. Americans are buying more cars than ever. According to sales tracker Auto Data. car sales have hit a record high for the seventh year in a row. They report 17.6 million cars and trucks were sold. In 2009, massive job losses and tight credit caused the car market to crash. After that, GM and Chrysler declared bankruptcy, but since then, sales have climbed. JFK Airport in New York is getting a complete overhaul. Today, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced a $10 billion project. It will reportedly update and expand the terminal and improve road and rail access to the airport. JFK served 60 million passengers last year and receives the most international travelers in the U.S. New York's other airport, LaGuardia, is already undergoing an $8 million billion dollar upgrade. Well, let's face it, we all need more sleep. And for the first time, CES, also known as the Consumer Electronics Show, will have a sleep tech marketplace displaying all the soon-to-be-available devices dedicated to giving you a good night's sleep. An eye-opener in this Project Economy report. It can be tough to get a good night's sleep. Pesky pets, strong snoring, and noisy neighbors can interrupt your dreams. But while some gadgets can be blamed for keeping you up like your smartphone, others can make your night's rest better. The Tranquil Moments bedside speaker and sleep sounds has 12 programs like Ocean Surf, White Noise, and Rain designed to promote better sleep. Nightingale has two speakers that blanket your room with ambient sound, blocking out indoor and outdoor noises. And if you or your partner makes the noise, Nora can help. It stops snoring by slightly moving your pillow throughout the night. Does the alarm clock jolt you awake? Well, try the Philips Wake Up Light. It slowly simulates the sunrise to help you naturally get up and moving so you don't spend your days focused on your sleep. There's a lot more than just sleep gadgets making their debut at the Consumer Electronics Show, including the world's largest flash drive. The Data Traveler Ultimate GT can store up to two terabytes of data. That's the equivalent of 160 HD movies. Now we understand it. And all that memory is squeezed into a device less than three inches long. The maker, Kingston Technology, is keeping the price a secret for now. And you've seen virtual reality headsets before, but this hypersuit takes it up a notch by involving the rest of your body. You lie on your stomach and put your arms in what looks like electronic wings. Then you can fly, skydive, or swim in virtual reality. That looks pretty cool. This isn't for sale just yet, but it could be the future of gaming. Wow. You burn virtually no calories. So no. Unless you, <laughs> unless you, unless you have to do this you quite are. a lot. Would you, Joe's the techie. Would you buy that? No, I, I'd buy it when the price would drop to like 19 bucks or something like that. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I would pay a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could do like I'm a I'm not their demographic one. they're looking for, I don't think. You're active? You're their demographic? Yeah. Well, I'd rather go out and do it rather yeah, than the you. Virtual, very much reality Joe. version of it. Yeah. It looks fun, though. <laughs> it does look it like fun. fun. It's yeah. something to do at night, right? <laughs> 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 All right. Let's bring you up to date. Live Super Doppler 7. Uh, we're, you know. This is the way we thought it would play out, that after midnight we would get the rain change of snow in Albuquerque. That's still on pace. You see uh, the storm system still to the west of us. Uh, this light snow will be intensifying overnight. There have already been periods of monitor heavy snow throughout I-25 from Raton, Las Vegas, Glorieta, from Tejeda's eastward. I think this entire area will have some very difficult travel in the morning. Already a foot of snow in Eagle Nest, eight inches over in Raton. And look at this as that moisture from the west sweeps over. These are real temperatures, not wind chills, but in the single digits with that Arctic air, Las Vegas, Angel Fire, on into Raton and Clayton. So all of this is going to be really uh, starting to ramp up with uh, snow and poor visibility, dangerous driving conditions. I think there's potential for road closures even on the interstates of 25 and 40 in the morning in the eastern part of the state and slick travel with these winter weather advisories. That does include Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Here's a look at future track. You see the snow's picking up around the Four Corners area for tonight on into Chama. 
Bahama, Taos, Raton, on into the northeastern parts of the state. We'll go ahead and look. You can see it's really going to be pretty dangerous as the main part of the storm moves through and then it starts to clear as we get on into the noon hour. Here's a look at the bus stop forecast. Waking up on Friday morning, it will likely be snowing heavy in spots too, and that's going to come with the temperature at or slightly below freezing. So kids need to be dressed to stay both warm and dry with their winter coats, hats and gloves and snow boots too, if you've got them. We'll have the latest for you tomorrow more in the morning. It all gets started at 4.30 a.m. Okay, here's a look at some of the uh, potential accumulations. We're looking for a trace perhaps two inches up around the foothills around Albuquerque and then a uh, slick and snowy and dangerous travel interstate 40, interstate 25 up toward Raton, heavy snow in the mountains and dicey travel between Gallup and Grants and around the Farmington area. Let's go ahead and look at the seven day forecast, a uh, trace to two inches here and that's really going to be the first part of the day. Temperatures holding primarily in the 30s. Look how that snow pulls out rather quickly. Teens and 20s eastern parts of the state. 20 and 30s throughout much of the rest of New Mexico. And then, wow, bitter wind chills to start your weekend Saturday morning, 42 in the afternoon. Better in the afternoon on Sunday. Mix of clouds and sunshine, a couple of showers around Monday, but temperatures in the mid. 50s, which is about 10 wow. degrees above normal. But uh, tomorrow there will be some rain changing to snow early on. It's going to clear out early on, and Doug is going to go out on his bike early on after all.